Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. Welcome to today's Daily Fountain devotional time with God. We thank God that uh, He has brought us to Friday. Some people usually say, thank God it's Friday. And uh, we know it is by His mercies. We pray that God who has brought us to this day will also see us through it and give us a very wonderful weekend in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We appreciate you for the renewing of your mercies. The hymn writer says, New every morning is your love. Our awakening and uprising, actually a proof of that. We pray that you will keep us and strengthen us by your word. Speak and expound it to your people. Let the meditation of uh, my mouth and that of the heart of your people be acceptable to you, O Lord, our God and Redeemer. Amen. We have before us the topic, God is the revealer of secrets. God is the revealer of secrets. We would like to go to his word and read from Daniel chapter 2. We shall read from the first verse to verse 24. Daniel 2 verses 1 to 24. In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers to tell him what he had dreamt. When they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream that troubles me and I want to know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king, May the king live forever. Tell your servant the dream and he will interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your house is turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Once more they replied, Let the king tell his servants the dream and we will interpret it. Then the king answered, I am certain that you are trying to gain time because you really you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there is only one penalty for you. You have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change. So then, tell me the dream, and I will know that you can interpret it for me. The astrologers answered the king, There is no one on earth who can do what the king asks. No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of any magician or, a, or enchanter or astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among humans. This made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death, and men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to put them to death. 
When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and, and tact. He asked the king's officer, Why did the king issue such a harsh decree? Ariok then explained the matter to Daniel. At this, Daniel went in to the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Then Daniel went to Ariok, whom the king had appointed to execute the wise men of Babylon, and said to him, Do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king, and I will interpret his dream for him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Today's topic is very interesting. It is interesting because even unbelievers attested to it. From where we read, the magicians of Babylon, the astrologers and the rest, they say only God can do what King Nebuchadnezzar was asking them to do. And indeed, only that they use a small letter to refer to that God, which means they were talking about the gods, the gods, because they had no knowledge of the true God, the God, Yahweh, whom, who created the heavens and the earth. God is the revealer of secrets. That is the truth. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says it, he said, all secret things belong to God. The ones that out of his magnanimity, he chooses to reveal to us. Then they become for us and for our children's children. It is true that secret is part of what makes God, God. The day we are able to know everything about God, then he ceases to be God. And so God is actually you know, covered with a lot of mysteries. And so no mystery is a mystery before God. Everything lay bare before him. It is very important. So even when you hear people celebrate, as people are celebrated as being wise, it is because, you know, a little bit of wisdom has been given to them by God. Little because God actually all wisdom and knowledge they domicile with god it is from him that wisdom comes it is from him knowledge comes mysteries are revealed by him that was the situation in babylon this looks to me like maybe perhaps one of the first tests after this young man graduated from this the academy the royal academy of babylon the king had a dream. Some scholars say he forgot it. But from the way he spoke, as if he did not forget, but he wanted them to both say the dream and say what the dream means or meant. And it was very difficult. It was difficult enough for him to even say the dream and allow them to say the meaning. But now he has chosen to make it more difficult by keeping both the dream. 
They were keeping the dream from them. Probably he forgot. But it's also possible that like he was presenting the case. You know, he doesn't want them to mislead him. Let them tell him the dream and go further to say the meaning or the interpretation. At the end of the day, they say, no one can do this thing that you ask. Then they also, you know, try to, to indict him. They say, no king on earth has also asked for this kind of thing you are asking. You know, perhaps they said that to make him a little bit sympathetic. They say, no, my verdict is irreversible. The penalty for this is that you'll be killed. Your houses will be turned into a pile of rubles. And they were already going to carry out the other. And incidentally, that was going to also affect the Hebrew young men. Because they too are seen as part of the wise people in that place. So when the man in charge of the king's command or royal guard went, Daniel said, ah, ah, why this kind of harsh, you know, stand? And he said, that is it, too. He said, okay. He requested for time. Pleaded. And that time he was obliged. At the end of the day, he went back, called his friends, told them the situation. And so what the first thing they sought for now was mercy. Mercy. They sought for mercy. Their lives were on the line. Okay, it's not a matter of now trying to, it was a matter of saving their lives. You know, there are times you get to situations like that where you need to turn to his God. Turn to his God. We have heard of things like that. We have heard of God intervening. People being delivered from the hand of, you know, terrible bandits and kidnappers. They're killing every other person. Killing, killing, killing. It got to their turn, mercy spoke. When the mercy of God speaks for you, you cannot be able to tell the story. So they prayed, and God revealed both the dream and the interpretation. And then Daniel burst into praise. That is where some of us miss it. You will seek for mercy. When you have found mercy, you forget the source. Or sometimes you begin to say, ah, it is because I prayed. It is because I fasted. It is because I, you know, I'm a child of God. I knew that God would never forsake his own. All of these things, you are not saying it to praise God. You are saying it to boast. So you are saying it to say, to, to give the impression that you did something. You did something. There was something exceptional you did. That's not what Daniel did. Daniel said, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. What he was going to go and display in the palace was wisdom. But he had already acknowledged where that wisdom comes from. Say, it is not mine, oh. it is God's. It, because it came from him. Say, wisdom and power, they are his. He changes times and seasons. He praised God in a very, very lascivious manner. Or in a very, very promiscuous manner. You know, loosely, he gave God the praise. He did not take any glory because it is not his. At the end of the day, he was able to save both his own life and the life of all the other magicians, astrologers, and the rest of it. So, he became a, an agent by which lives were saved. And that is the truth of it. When God, when we align with God for him to use us, lives will be saved. In everything that we do for God here, if it does not have direct bearing to deliverance of lives, to the salvation of life, then we know something is wrong. When they talk about Christian fruitfulness, what does it mean? It means actually producing after our own kind. It means pulling people out of the, 
the, the grip of the devil. It means bringing people from darkness to light. That's what it means. But most of the times, when people say, I built one house in Metama, I built another one in uh, Lake in Lagos, I praise the Lord. Those are the kind of things that we celebrate. I have waited for 10 years, and now God gave us triplet. As good as those things may be, the main thing is the salvation of life. First of all, you must work to save your own life. In outside, they say, ba -aba -da babu. It is what you have, you can offer. So before you talk about saving other people, you must make sure you say. So the first life that Daniel saved was his life. Then, of course, the others, his, his friends, and then the other magicians. That was because he relied on God. He subscribed to the wisdom that is God. He did not beat his hand on the chest and say, I can do it. He knew that it is God. As Christians, we are also supposed to learn to depend on God. Today what we are seeing is only those who are in trouble. They are the ones that seem to need God. But everybody needs God. The rich, the poor. When you go to our prayer meetings in our churches today, who are the people you see there? Hardly do you see the rich. Except maybe a few of them that do not even think in their hearts that they are rich. Humility is so much central. A lot of rich people are too busy for God. Especially those whose wealth has entered their head. The wealth has entered their head. Many of them, they think they are the ones that, that have the possessions. Actually, those things have possessed them. So they are not the ones that own the things. It is the things that own them. And it is dangerous when you get to that level where the things that you own, now there is a reverse. And there are those things that you own now start to own you. It is terrible. That is the level of materialism. That is, the left, that is the, the peak of carnality. A lot of people are at that level. God has to work to deliver them. A lot of people today, some big people, when they come to church, they believe they are actually doing a favor coming to church. That's the reason why sometimes some of them need some kind of recognition that is not at this, at, that is not that, you know, you cannot describe. You say, I will leave that church. I will leave that church. They are not recognizing me the way they should. You are not coming to church for recognition. You are coming to church to express your need for God. Mr. Man, let me tell you, you are not doing anybody a favor going to church. You are doing yourself a favor. You need God more than he needs you. If God snaps his finger, if, you know, God is the one that can actually take somebody's life and he can't feel guilty. We have animals in our houses. How many of us feel guilty when you slaughter a goat that you own or a chicken that you own for Christmas or for a party or something? It is a normal thing. That's the purpose for which that rich man in the Bible, in Luke, that the young man that got a good bumper harvest, you know, he said he was not going, he, he developed a stingy attitude. He said, I, 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 I will break down the former bands, I will build new ones, I will store these ones, I will eat and have milk. Do you know? God is not a thief. God does not take what belongs to anybody forcefully. No. God did not stretch his hand to say, okay, I will take those things. No. God simply took what is his own in the man's life. And the life, the very life he lived, was belonged to God. So God take his thing. Say, you keep your own. I'll take my own. By the time God took his own, the man was no longer there to enjoy those things. It's somebody else or others that enjoyed it. 
You must stop playing with God. God is not your mate. God is not even the mate of your president or anybody. You must understand that it is not God that needs you. You are the one that needs God. Yes, because of his salvation plan, he desires that you should be saved. That's the sense in which he needs you. You have to come into his salvation. But let me tell you, you choose, somebody will say, if I don't get a husband by the end of this year, I will backslide. If you backslide, it will not reduce God from being God. It is we who need God much more than he needs us. It is good to think that. It's very important. Daniel, they went back to God. They sought his face. There is a need for us to go back to God. Consultation of ungodly mediums will not bring solution to troubling situations. It's very important. The man first went to ungodly mediums, the enchanters, the astrologers, the magicians. No solution came from there. King Nebuchadnezzar had a troubling dream and consulted his astrologers, magicians, and soothsayers to tell him his dream and its interpretation. But they could not. You cannot get solution from that, from those sources from those from from the, from that end actually sometimes the problems are emanates from such places so how do you go there for solution some people go to consult medium some people even go to to oracles you know we have a constant quest to want to know the future that's the reason why one of the ministry that is very popular today in the church is the ministry of the prophets People do not answer call to become pastors anymore. Everybody wants to be a prophet. And what does the prophet do? He tell you of your future. He tell you of what is your problem. He tell you of... If you want to know the future, what is the place of faith? Say, I want to travel to Anisha. Please, man of God, I want you to help me check whether there will be kidnappers on the way or not. So that I will go or postpone the journey. If you need to know all that... Where is the place of faith? God has taken away such from you and has given you something to replace. He said, have faith in God. Pray. Hit the road. You will go to Anisha and come back. Whether a man of God help you to see it or not. And you must even grow on your own to the level where you should be able to. God can minister to you. Don't do this journey until such and such a time. It is possible. God does not intend that any of his children will be contracting spiritual people for all of such mean little duty. I want you to help me confirm whether that girl is my wife. All of those things. People have done it, done them and headed into error and have been afflicted with many stripes today. Up to now they have not recovered. I pray the Lord will grant us grace. He will grow his church, will be mature in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, all of this did not work. Daniel, a godly man, had the understanding that secret things belong to God. And he revealed to them that fear him. He had the understanding that secret things belong to God. And I revealed to them that fear him. He asked for time from the king. And together with his three Hebrew colleagues, prayed. And Daniel chapter 2 verses 18 and 19 says God revealed the secret to Daniel and he did not take the glory or make merchandise of it, but gave all the glory to God. Daniel 2, 20-23. God has not changed. In Jeremiah 33, verse 3, he says, Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. That was what he demonstrated in the life of Daniel and the others. In every sector of human existence, we need not to consult ungodly mediums for solution. But we have to consult God, the custodian and revealer of secrets, secrets for solutions. And when the, he answers, we will not take the glory or make merchandise of it as it is being done today. A lot of these people, when God uses them, 
to effect a solution in the life of men, they take payment for it. They take money in return. That is making merchandise of the grace of God. But return it all to him. We have to continually make ourselves available like Daniel to be used of God to reveal secrets. Prayer. May God make me a vessel that you, my God make me a vessel that you will use to reveal secrets in Jesus name. That is should be a prayer in the heart of every child of God. Rather than depending on others, you know, to reveal secrets of God's secrets to you. Ask him to make you a vessel through which his secrets will be made known to the world. And then, by the way, what are God's secrets? They are his will. His secrets are his will, parcel, parceled unto man. We pray that God will help us, take us to that level. Father, we thank you because you are God. We thank you for seeing us through. We appreciate you because you are God Almighty. Help us, Father, as we journey along this path. We are journeying in a path that we know not. We are trusting that you who have who has who has gone before, you will go with us. We will see your footmark and plant ours in them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.